Hello everyone. Welcome to Classroom 2.0 Live for Saturday, May 6th. I'm one of your co-moderators, Lori Moffat, along with Peggy George, Tammy Moore, and Paula Noggle. Thanks to Tammy for doing the closed captioning for us. Our topic today is Choose to be Nice with our special guest, Dina Krieger. And I'm going to now introduce Dina and ask her, her the newbie question. Dina Krieger has turned a passion for kindness into a social enterprise with the driving goal of inspiring people to treat each other with compassion. She created a movement around asking people to make and keep a promise to be nice, which thousands around the globe have done. The movement includes a program that enables schools to create a lasting culture of kindness through an innovative curriculum with classroom activities and nine adorable mice representing important values such as respect, friendship, and acceptance. Dina understands the need for kindness in schools through her experience as an involved mo mother who served as PTO president and treasurer and raised funds to bring smart boards into the school's classrooms. She has an undergraduate degree from Boston University and, MB and an MBA from Babson College. In addition to making the world a nicer place, her passions include her family, reading, education, connecting with genuine people, laughing, making people smile, and playing with her big golden doodle named football. Your newbie question, Dina, is this. Why did you decide to create the Choose to be Nice movement? Hi, everyone. Uh, before I answer the newbie question, I just want to thank uh, Peggy and Lori for this opportunity to be able to share my passion with all of you uh, listening here today. So I'm very grateful and uh, thank you very much. Uh, so why did I decide to create the movement? It's really, really was a long time coming and it, it you know, I'm a big believer that Movements come about because of what's happened to someone in their personal lives and, you know, maybe something happens over and over again and it kind of shapes who you are. So in my case, it was really a culmination of uh, what started when I was in elementary school, continued throughout my work career and uh, really sort of ended on April 15th, 2013 when I decided to move forward with Choose to be Nice. Um, as I reflect back on, you know, what led me uh, to start Choose to be Nice. I, I really call it the three Bs. Um, the, the, uh, the three Bs are really uh, bullying, uh, bosses, and the Boston Marathon bombings. And um, as a kid, I was bullied. Uh, remember to this day who the two people were that bullied me, what they did. Um, uh, in the cases of bad bosses, I was in the corporate world for a long time and uh, just always had folks that I reported to that were just, uh, to me, less than leaders, uh, less than bosses, and it was very hard for me. I was always uh, successful at what I did, but uh, it never felt right where I was because there was a lot of, uh, a lot of things that went on um, uh, between and among people that were unfortunate. Um, so a lot of those, you know, those couple of things sort of led to how I was feeling, uh, always growing up and, and going throughout the corporate world. And I decided that um, I really wanted to create something to make uh, the world a nicer place. And I, I really didn't know where to start or how to start, but um, the impetus or, or what finally propelled me forward uh, was the third B of the Boston Marathon bombings. And I think that, you know, living here in Boston and experiencing the outpouring of love and kindness toward others uh, following uh, this tragic event, um, that's what really propelled me forward. And literally the next day, I, I said, I'm starting Choose to be Nice and had no idea what I was going to do, but decided that was it. So I think, um, you know, that was kind of, it, it sort of shaped me uh, growing up and then uh, for a long time wanted to create this and decided to finally create it after a pretty uh, tragic uh, incident happened. So, um, so I started uh, Choose to be Nice in 2013, the day after uh, the Boston Marathon bombings. And I'd like to share with you um, how it really came to about. Um, uh, 
tell you a little bit something about our Choose to be Nice school program, uh, how it works specifically, some of the tools that come with uh, a membership kit, and uh, how you can get involved overall in the Choose to be Nice movement uh, should you decide to. So a lot of things that I think about, um, you know, or when I talk to people, when I'm thinking about Choose to be Nice, I, I ask people to think about the extraordinary number of interactions that you have with people during a single day. You know, think about it. Um, what comes to mind? How many people do you come into contact with every single day? Are you at home with your family members, your spouse, your pets? Are you at work? Are you talking with colleagues, uh, your boss, uh, those that work for you? Uh, maybe it's somebody in another department. Maybe it's a stranger that you run into the hallway uh, or the bathroom or the cafeteria. What about in school? What about in your community? You're at the grocery store. You're driving down the street. You're at the coffee joint getting a cup of coffee. And I think to myself, who are these people? Who, who are they? Some of them are strangers. Some of them are people we know. Some of them are people that you know we hope to never know, and some are people that we really would like to get to know. Um, so when I think about that, I think about these people having interactions with one another. You know, what are those interactions like? Um, are there any warm smiles? Are both parties present in the conversation or the interaction? Are people making eye contact with one another? Um, are people listening to one another? How are each of, you know, how, how are these parties responding to one another? Um, do you feel like you were heard? How did you react to them? Are people shaking hands? Are they hugging? Are they fist bumping? So for me, it's always about, you know, what's going on in that interaction? And by the way, how do you feel when that interaction is over? Um, do you feel excited? Like the folks on the right of the slide here, do you feel frustrated? Um, you know, there's so many different feelings uh, that we have. Was it was it a positive interaction? Was was it inspired, joyful, accomplished? Do you feel confident? Do you feel uplifted? Do you feel like you were heard? In some cases, you might feel sad. You might feel negative, uh, embarrassed, small, awkward, even. Um, and and how does the other person feel? Do we even think about how that other person might feel during that interaction? So I've always been aware of interactions. I don't know where, why, who, what, but ever since I've been a little kid, I would always watch people talking to one another and sort of look at how they are talking to one another. And I would always find myself dissecting the conversation and coming up with ways that it could have been better, uh, a more positive interaction. Um, so I always wonder if, you know, what he said would have been taken a different way if it had been accepted in a different way. Um, how did this person react? Um, so in watching all of these interactions throughout my whole life, and currently my goal around Choose to be Nice really is to remind people that we always have a choice about how to be in the world. Uh, we have a choice about how we interact with others. We have a choice about how we respond to others. We have a choice about how we speak to others. And with kids, um, you know, it's more than just reminding them, it's teaching them, it's making them aware of the choices they have and the benefits uh, of being kinder to one another. So that's my son Jacob, that's my baby, he's now 18 years old and he's leaving in a couple of months to go off to the University of Miami and go out and, and make his mark on the world, whatever that is. And I always, you know, when I would think about my son, I would always think about a lot of the other parents that I would know or hang out with. And it just seems like a lot of us parents are, are concerned about our kids' achievements and their successes and whether they're happy or not and, you know, things like that. And, yeah, I think those are all important. But honestly, for me, what's more important is kindness, respect, um, you know, acceptance, friendship, a warm smile. These are the things um, that are important. And I think, you know, from the time he's been a little boy, I taught him the importance of how we interact with others and how we treat others uh, and how it's important, whether they're our family, our friends, um, maybe they're acquaintances, maybe they're even strangers. Um, you know, I would teach him that as a person, you can have a positive impact on someone. You can have a negative 
impact on someone. And honestly, that impact can be teeny tiny, and it can be re or it could be really large. And teeny tiny impacts and really large impacts are still impacts, whatever they are. And those impacts can sometimes have positive consequences, and they can have negative impact, uh, negative consequences as well. So I would always ask my son, what kind of impact does he want to have on others? Um, you know, I think we. We all get so caught up in this fast-paced world that we don't really stop and think about the impact we're having on those around us. And I would always ask my son before he goes to bed at night, I still do, think about all of the people that you came into contact with today. And what were those interactions like? Were they kind? Were they respectful? Were they warm? Did you make eye contact? Did you offer a smile? If you can say yes to all of those questions, then you know what? You will be successful. You will achieve things and you will be happy. Those to me are what's important and those are the ideas that really you know, formed when I was thinking about choose to be nice. So I really came up with the specific idea for a long time and then like I said in the intro, um, you know, it was the Boston Marathon bombings that kind of set me in motion. So I had been thinking in 2012 a lot about how our world had become so wonderfully open but also really exposed because of, among many things, you know, social media. Um, my son was 12, and like many other early teens, he was starting to get onto Facebook, and, and uh, I, of course, worried as his mom about his safety and his overall well-being. You know, I think there was a big difference when I was a kid and I was being bullied. I always had a reprieve from that bullying. So I'd go to school and I'd get a reprieve. I'd go home and I'd get a reprieve. It's different today with social media. These kids, um, you know, can be relentless and it can be 24-7 uh, taunting. And as a mom, that was really scary for me. So, you know, at the same time in 2012, it really seemed like this sort of issue of bullying was at the forefront of everyone's mind. And every night I would hear something, a new report on the news, and, and really sometimes these reports um, talked about tragic consequences. And it really just reminded me of my, you know, when I was a little girl. So. Busy working full time, uh, decided it was time to do something, and literally the day after the, the bombings, I decided that we're going to uh, create Choose to Be Nice. And you know, for me, uh, it's a way of it's a way of life. It's a way for me to express what I'm looking for in myself, uh, as well as in others. Um, you know, I have a we have a line of merchandise: Choose to Be Nice hats and T-shirts. When I wear my Choose to Be Nice T-shirt, which I do all the time. I sort of feel like I'm held to a higher standard of behavior. Uh, I slow down. I think more about my interactions with others and, and how I can make those interactions better. How can I make them nicer? How can, they make, how can I make them more meaningful? And I really want others all over the world to experience the same thing. And I try to imagine every single day a world where everyone slows down, pays more attention to their interactions with others, and works to improve those interactions. The Choose to be nice promise. So when I started Choose to be nice, I really designed it around a simple promise. Um, it took me <laughs> several weeks to create this promise, and, and being that I can be a bit of a perfectionist sometimes, it, it took me a while. But I wanted it to just be just perfect, not too onerous. I wanted it to be, um, I wanted it to be a promise, not a pledge. Uh, I often see pledges, but for, for some reason, a promise to me feels more personal. Um, a promise is something you keep. Hopefully, uh, it feels more long-lasting to me versus a pledge feels like a one-time thing. I'm going to pledge $50 to this great organization. So for me, I wanted to call it a promise. I have this crazy goal of getting a million people from around the world to sign the Choose to be Nice promise. That's on my website. And I'm going to go ahead and try to screen share and show you where that promise is if anyone would like to go ahead and make that promise. It is right here on my website, and you can click on where it says Make the Promise, and here it is. You fill in a little bit of information. You give us a, a reason. Give me an example of how you choose to be nice. It's really amazing because people from all around the world uh, have signed this promise. I, I don't know how they hear about us, but it's fantastic. Literally, Australia, Belgium, Brazil, Nepal, Kenya, Costa Rica, Israel. 
I remember being so excited when I found, uh, I think in the same day, we got a Choose to be Nice Promise from Israel and a Choose to be Nice Promise from Saudi Arabia. And I thought that was kind of interesting. So, Nina, excuse me just yes. a second. We're not seeing it yet. You need to okay. select Start Sharing. Ah, so I do. <laughs> and then refresh our memories on what you just said on your, when your website comes up. Sure. We're, I'm sorry, everyone. Where do I? There we go. Okay. There it is. Okay. I am so. Please forgive me, everyone. Perfect. This is our. This. Is, thank you, Peggy. This is our promise page. We've had thousands of people from around the world. We're getting close to that million uh, promise mark. There, we're at seven thousand three hundred and seventy-five. So, if each of everyone here on this phone call. Uh, makes the promise as well, we'll be that much closer. So you'd go ahead, you'd fill it in here, you'd give us a, a reason and give us one example of choosing to be nice. And we have so many people fill this out, they take it really seriously. And we have so many examples that we hope to publish in a book one day of how people around the world choose to be nice. So that's where you can uh, make the promise on our website. I'm going to do my best to stop sharing now and go back to our whiteboard. So again, that is our promise. It's really at the heart of what we're doing uh, with Choose to be Nice. And as you can read here, I promise to help spread kindness wherever and whenever possible. And to the very best of my ability, I'll be nice to those with whom I come into contact on a daily basis. And what I like to tell the kids is we put in and to the very best of my ability. Because sometimes somebody thinks, oh my God, if I make a promise, you know, sometimes people break their promises. That's OK. We ask them to the very best of their ability to do the following. And the, the kids love making the promise. So we then took that promise to our school program uh, that we created. And um, currently, uh, you know, that's, that's the heart of the school program is people make the promise when they start, start the school program. And um, currently, just to give you a little bit of background about where we are with the schools, we're in about 30 schools uh, currently. Nine out of ten of them are elementary schools. Our current program is geared toward elementary schools because that's where we started. But we had so many people in middle school and high school saying, where is our program? Where is our program? So those are both in development currently, and they'll be ready for September. And we've got a list of folks that are interested, so we're very excited. So our schools are mostly in Massachusetts. That's where we're based right now. But we also have schools in New Hampshire, Pennsylvania, Texas, California. And my goodness, we're international. We're even in uh, Canada. And I have uh, Dubai there with a couple question marks because I've been speaking to a wonderful school in Dubai. And it looks like they're going to become a Choose to be Nice school in September as well. So that's pretty exciting. Before we go any further, I would love to show you a new segment. This came out in January. It's a wonderful segment featuring uh, one of our schools in Brockton, Massachusetts called the Baker School. It's a wonderful story, and it shows the type of impact uh, we're having. And you'll also uh, see an adorable set of triplets in this video as well. So Peggy, as they say, roll them, please. In tonight's Five for Good, a mother leaves the corporate world to develop a curriculum of caring. As Erica Tarantal tells us, her goal is to help kids understand the power of choosing to be nice. I promise to help spread kindness to the very best of my ability. I'll be nice to those. Triplets Samantha, Maxwell, and Andrew Bassett recite a promise they signed at the start of the school year. In fact, the pledge has been made by everyone at Mary E. Baker Elementary in Brockton. If someone falls down, I help them up. If um, someone is sitting alone at lunch and they're um, alone for some reason, you can sit with them and have lunch and talk. This is a Choose to be Nice school, a program brought here by the principal, who found success with it at a previous school. We started to see a big change. People just being nicer to other people. That's the simple but important goal, says creator Dina Krieger, who left her job to start a Kickstarter campaign to fund this passion. I worry a lot about the civility or the lack of civility in our country. It scares me to death. Choose to be Nice offers activity guides tailored to kids. Age-appropriate characters represent different values. Felipe the friendship mouse, Ryan the respectful mouse. We roll out one value a month. Kimberly Gentile has incorporated the program into her classes at Baker. She explains it's extended well beyond that. We brainstormed ways that we could spread kindness in the hallway and at recess and in the cafeteria 
and at home and in the community. By all accounts, the act of just promising to be nice has made a huge impact. The Bassett kids have certainly taken it to heart. You can't break a promise once you make it. So it, it stays there and you won't forget about that promise you made. Dina Krieger hopes to get one million people around the world to sign the Choose to be Nice promise. Her lesson plans are now in dozens of schools and counting. Erica Tarantel, WCVB News Center 5. Thank you, Peggy. I hope everyone enjoyed uh, that new segment. It was a lot of fun uh, filming it, and the kids are terrific. The school is wonderful, and they've really uh, they've noticed a huge impact there. So thank you for watching that. So somebody decides, uh, a school decides to become a uh, choose to be nice school, we send them a uh, wonderful big box, uh, a welcome kit. Uh, this is a school, uh, these wonderful, uh, this principal and the wonderful guidance counselors, uh, this is a school up in New Hampshire. Um, the uh, kit includes really uh, everything you need uh, to get everything started in the school, including, you know, um, uh, the K to five curriculum, the promise banner. There's wristbands in there for the kids. There's posters. There's several different guides uh, explaining various sort of how tos and and different ways uh, to take advantage uh, of the program. So in the school, excuse me. Uh -oh. At the beginning, there's a school welcome kit. So inside uh, the welcome kit is a guide to really get you through the entire program. You'll find a, you'll find step-by-step -step instructions, including everything from getting everyone on board um, to opening assembly scripts uh, and more. It's it's really a comp you know the program that's outlined in the kit is comprehensive enough that you really don't have to think about it. You can just implement it, and before you know it, the end of the year has come and you've implemented this wonderful program, um, but it's also flexible enough that you can add different things and substitute uh, other things as well, uh, which many of the schools have done. You really start out by hosting a Choose to be Nice assembly. Uh, here everyone learns about Choose to be Nice. Uh, this is where all of the students and the staff have an opportunity to sign the Choose to be Nice promise banner. Um, as you can see here, these were very, ex they, they all get very excited because they see the, the banner hanging up and they all want to run up and sign it. So here they are making uh, the Choose to be Nice Promise. Um, here's a couple of other uh, photos of kids signing the promise as well. They love to do it. Uh, so that's really how it gets started. And the idea is once it's signed by everyone, it gets hung up in uh, the lobby, in the, in the cafeteria, or some other uh, highly visible, highly trafficked area. Some of my schools even get parents to sign it. Uh, a funny story, uh, one of my schools said they had a tremendous problem with the car line outside during drop-off and pickup, and I'm sure a lot of us uh, know that feeling. And once they started implementing Choose to be Nice and a lot of these people saw the promise banner, she said it was almost an instant change in the car line and people became much more uh, friendly, they slowed down a little bit, became more patient. Um, you'll also uh, get curriculum, so in our current elementary school curriculum, there's two learning and activity guides. One is the K-2 to two guide, uh, and then there's a uh, three to five, grades three to five uh, guide as well. Um, Choose to be Nice can really be used as a standalone program or in conjunction with other existing school programs. So uh, a lot of the schools that I currently work with have other you know, either social and emotional learning programs that they're using or character development type programs that they're using. And uh, the Choose to be Nice program is really a wonderful complement to those programs uh, as well, or they can be used uh, standalone. Uh, the two learning activity guides feature 54 lessons in total. There's nine per grade. And they're, you know, they're designed to promote the Choose to be Nice uh, values uh, that we have. Um, the activities are student-centered, uh, they involve independent and collaborative learning, they focus on building the important and lifelong skills uh, of social and emotional intelligence and self-awareness. We also provide different extension ideas and home links uh, really to stretch the learning a bit further. The K-2 learning activity guide is called the Nine Nice Mice. Those are very sweet little mice that the children love, and each mouse uh, 
corresponds to a different one of our character traits. So there's Ryan, the respectful mouse, Kira, the kindness mouse, etc. In third grade, the mice morph into little children, uh, and you will be introduced to the mice and the children a little bit later on in the presentation. I talked about our, our different uh, values. Um, these, we feel like these are the nine different values that the nine nice mice and the kids in the three to five book are teaching. And these values are going to go all the way up to high school, not with the nine nice mice, obviously, but in different ways. For us, we feel like as people sort of embrace these values, learn these values, hold them close to their hearts, that if they do, they will in turn uh, be choosing to be nice. And these are basic things. Uh, respect, you know, be polite, show consideration for others and their differences, teamwork, collaborate, work well together with others, honesty, be truthful and fair, patience, uh, friendship. We want these to be simple, uh, simple ideas, but that are really incredibly important as children and as you grow up and uh, go out in the work world. Here's some uh, sample pages uh, that I've included from each of the guide. So again, each guide and each character trait or value, we offer a children's book selection about the particular topic. There's a learning activity. Uh, there's extension ideas. There's home links. So for example, in our, uh, in our K to 2 guide, under kindness, for example, we suggest the book The Kindness Quilt by Nancy Wallace. Uh, that's the book suggestion. And uh, then we offer an activity that can be done in the classroom. The activities are usually anywhere from 30 to 35 minutes. Um, the activity is creating a little kindness quilt. And then there are various extension ideas offered that can be done in and around the school if there's time. So we offer a bunch of ideas for other ways uh, to uh, act out and to uh, show kindness to others. And also it was important for me as a mom when I was involved in my son's school I always wanted to know what was going on in school. So to me, it was important to have these home links. So with the home links, the kids can go home to their parents and guardians and say, hey, we talked about kindness today. This is what we did. This is what we learned. And I want to ask you about a time when. And it, it encourages them to have a specific conversation about what's going on. These I included, these are, these are the, the, the nine nice mice. I included a slide on each one. Hopefully it's not too much. They're adorable. I'm certainly partial to them. So this is Alex, the acceptance mouse. Uh, he, he's always accepting, and he uh, uh, understands that accepting people's differences is what makes him special. And the kids uh, learn and meet uh, Alex in kindergarten, first grade, and second grade. And then in third grade, uh, Alex turns into a, a little boy. So same idea, same everything, the characters just change. Um, we got the message that the fourth and fifth graders were a little too cool for the mice, so we turned those into people. So uh, this is Alex, the acceptance, and there's Cameron, the courageous mouse. Uh, he always chooses to be nice even in the most difficult situations. Uh, Felipe, the friendship mouse, uh, he's reminded that the friendlier he is, the more fun he has. Anna, the honesty mouse, uh, she, of course, is always truthful. Kira, the kindness mouse, uh, she spreads kindness wherever she goes, naturally. Priya is very patient. She remembers that by having patience, she can accomplish anything. Riley's very responsible. She's a big help to her family and friends. Ryan, the respectful mouse, of course, he's always polite. And Tyler, the teamwork mouse, he remembers that working together is extremely important, whether we're five years old or whether we're 50 years old. So those are the nine nice mice. So in addition to curriculum, and there's all different types of activities that are done throughout the course of the year, there's lots of other tools that we provide the schools as part of their Choose to be Nice program. One is a Choose to be Nice club. So with Choose to be Nice clubs, it's really a great way for these uh, students to get involved beyond the classroom and to promote and sustain a real culture of kindness throughout the school year. Uh, the club members, uh, obviously with the oversight of a guidance uh, counselor or a teacher, uh, meet regularly. They agree on activities and projects that will have an impact uh, on what they're doing and hopefully have an impact on themselves, their schools, their communities. And we provide a whole list of ideas of what kids can do as part of their Choose to be Nice clubs. And we have a lot of schools that are doing this. It's amazing what these kids are doing. I've included just a few examples here. This uh, Choose to be Nice Club at Charlton Elementary School in Charlton, Mass. 
are amazing. Uh, in fact, last year they had 15 kids in their Choose to Be Nice Club. This year they had 40. Uh, the, the principal tried to stop it at 20 and she got lots of angry phone calls from parents saying, my kid wants to be in the Choose to Be Nice Club. So there's 40 of them. Um, so here's some of the things they do. They, they got together one afternoon and, and made uh, dog and cat toys um, for uh, animal shelters. Over here, this is a service dog that came to visit them and they learned all about uh, service dogs and what they do to help children. Here they are uh, making blankets uh, for, for an animal shelter. So this was, they thoroughly enjoyed uh, doing that. Here was uh, last year's Choose to be Nice Club at one of our schools. This is a bunch of first graders. They were very excited. They, they built a little Choose to be Nice garden out school and they created that uh, poster behind them as well. Here's a school who goes and visits uh, their senior center. Uh, they play games, they read stories, they, they eat food with the seniors, and they do that at the beginning of the year. At the end of the year, they invite the seniors to their school. Uh, they give them a tour, and they sit, and they uh, read stories together. This group made a bunch of uh, bags, special bags for kids that are in foster homes and filled them with uh, little goodies that would be special for the children to receive and they decorated the bags. Just, you know, really wonderful things. This group uh, decided they wanted to adopt a soldier in Afghanistan. Uh, his name is Martin and they've sent him multiple packages of goodies and uh, they sent him this poster with all of their handprints on it and they also write him letters. Imagine how that soldier must feel. Um, this is one of my high schools. Uh, this is a day where they all created uh, wonderful notes to each other and, and hung them up in, uh, in the hallways for, for random people to see. This is a group out in California. There's about 25 kids. They get together every month and do various things in their Choose to be Nice Club. Besides Choose to be Nice Club, we have a great activity that is encouraged all through the year. It's called 101 Ways to Choose to be Nice Challenge. We literally give them a list of 101 things. We say, how many of these things can you do throughout the course of the school year? So this is uh, something that they literally go through. They check them off. And by the end of the year, if they've checked off all 101 things, guess what? It's pretty remarkable. We also have the option, some schools uh, do fundraisers. Um, uh, we have a line of merchandise that is another tool. It's how we get our message out into the world. People love our sweatshirts and our t-shirts and hats. So kids can run fundraisers. We ask them to choose a particular organization in their community that they feel passionate about and care about. And we will donate 30% of proceeds to that particular organization. The younger kids get excited and we encourage them to uh, make pictures and uh, drawings during the fundraiser time of what it looks like, feels like, sounds like uh, to choose to be nice. And they come up with some amazing stories and some amazing pictures just around that one topic. What does it look like? What does it feel like? What does it sound like to choose to be nice? It's amazing to see what these kids come up with. We end the year. This is our first year. This is our first annual Choose to be Nice Week. It's uh, next month, June 5 to 9, and Choose to be Nice Week is um, really a uh, way for everyone to get together and have a big celebration that, hey, we, we did Choose to be Nice all year long. We're a special culture of kindness. We want to continue it next year. Each day has a theme, so Monday is Make It Matter Monday. There's Teamwork Tuesday. Welcoming Wednesday, Thankful Thursday, Friendship Friday. And this is a uh, week each day. They, we have a whole guide uh, that comes with it. That's the front page of the guide right there. And inside is all different activities that, they recommend, that we recommend that they do during the week, uh, similar to the, the curriculum guides. At the beginning, they have an opening assembly. And on the Friday, uh, there's a big community celebration. We uh, uh, ask them and encourage them to invite their police chief, their their superintendents, any politicians, the fire chief, etc. You know, and everybody makes a choose to be nice promise, and they have activities and and they you know they celebrate together. So if if anyone is interested, we always uh, let folks know that we have a information kit on our website. It's on our schools page. So if anyone's interested in learning more about Choose to be nice, we have a comprehensive information kit um, that explains all about the program. And uh, if you download that, that will uh, give you information uh, about the program and probably give you more information than you'll ever need. Um, 
Also, uh, we have something called the Daily Nice. It's just something that's on our social media. You can sign up for it on our website. It's just something we put out there every day as you know, some, some way that you can choose to be nice. So choose to be on it. The Daily Nice on Sunday, check out our neighbors um, on the power outage. Look at people. Offer them a friendly smile as you walk by. Give the child positive feedback. So every day, Monday through Sunday, we come out with a Daily Nice, whether you subscribe to it or you see it on our social media channels. We have great merchandise. People love our t-shirts, our sweatshirts, our hats. We have a shop available on our website and people are always welcome to go there and see if you find something uh, fun that you'd like to wear and it helps, believe me, it helps you, it keeps you to a higher standard of behavior when you're, when you're wearing that and it's, it's great for people to see. So you're helping to spread the message. Uh, as long as we're talking about Choose to be Nice and Peril, here's our big fun fact. Our merchandise was featured on Good Morning America last year. We sold 6,000 units in that day uh, in every single uh, state in the country had ordered something. So that was, that was pretty fun. That was a very exciting day. If you'd like to get involved, um, go to our website, make the Choose to be Nice Promise. While you're there, you can nominate somebody who's a really super nice person. We pick somebody every month. They get a free t-shirt. We write a blog post about them and feature them on our social media channels. You can sign up for the Daily Nice on our website. Certainly, you can sign up for our newsletter if you want to keep in touch with all things Choose to be Nice. And lastly, um, you know, feel free to connect with us. If anyone wants to connect with me individually, feel free. I love to hear from people. My email address is right there. Our website, we're on social media. And um, please keep in touch with us. And, and thank you. Thank you all uh, so much for listening. And I'm incredibly grateful that I had this opportunity. So thank you. I did capture questions. So thanks, Dina, for the, the wonderful information. A uh, couple of these might already have been answered, but I'll go ahead and, and ask. Um, do you have plans to offer plush toys of your mice? <laughs> I cannot believe somebody asked that. The short, <laughs> an, the short answer is absolutely. I, Great. you know, it, it's it's a wonderful thing. We, long story short, we have a whole. The nine nice mice will take on a life of their own. We hope to mm -hmm. be able to bring them to life and and come out with a book series and do a, a school tour with the mice. So we have lots of plans with the mice. One of which is plush toys. Yes. Great. I think you mentioned this in towards the end of the discussion, I would imagine that downloadable kit is a starter kit. Somebody asked, do you have a starter kit that we could check out before buying the entire school program? We don't have anything called a starter kit. The information kit is, is a, it's probably about 20, 25 pages, gives you all the information you need um, to understand what's involved. And then I'm happy a lot of people like to receive. We have a set of sample pages from mm -hmm. each of the, the Nine Nice Mice Guide and the Grades 3 to 5 Guide. We have sample pages that you can, uh, that I'm happy to send out to folks so you can take a look to see what's actually in the curriculum. Okay. Yeah. The clubs that you mentioned, are they after school? And you already answered who runs them, but that was the other part of the question. Sure, it's it's really up to the school. We have schools mm -hmm. doing different things. My my son, for example, in his high school, they do it after school. Um, but one of my elementary schools, it is after school. It's a commitment. The principal does it after school. Another one of my schools, they make it part of of uh, you know a day um, during the school, or they do it during gym time or during health class. So it's really mm -hmm. up to the school how they want to do it you know, what timing works for them and the commitment level that there is. There's no special Great. requirements. It's really up to the school how they want to do it. Mm -hmm. Are you available to Skype or Google Hangout in the classrooms to talk about Choose to be Nice? That's a great question. I, I'm open to anything and everything. I, I have to be honest with you. I've never done Google Hangouts. I'm always willing to learn. Uh, and sure, I'm always happy to uh, chat with folks. And mm -hmm. I don't have a specific program offering or anything. But absolutely, I'm. we're growing. We're a fairly new organization. And we are 
uh, you know, that's a great idea. People ask us if we'll do training sessions. There's a lot of different things that we're working on and trying to create. But absolutely, we'd love to um, go visit schools, um, you know, whether it's in Google Hangouts or, or Skype or in person. So yes, that's certainly a possibility. And you always know, start with one, right? Sure. Um, tell us more about nominating a nice person. Can it be anyone, including grown-ups? Oh my God, it can be anyone. Absolutely. We, you know, to me, it's we want to know, we want to hear stories. So people can go. You go on our website. There's a place where you can nominate them. You fill out a form. What's your name? What's your email address? What makes this person special? And you basically give a description. If it's your child, if it's a pet, if it's, you can nominate your pet, you can nominate you know whoever you want. Some people nominate a teacher. They nominate people they work with. They yes, you can nominate absolutely anybody. And at the end of each month, we take all the nominations that came in that month, and we select one randomly, mm -hmm. and we send them a, a choose to be nice T-shirt, and we also send the person that nominated them. A choose to be nice T-shirt. We get a little bit of information about them. What's your favorite thing about choose to be nice? And and we write up a little blog post and we we feature them on our social media channels. Wonderful. Yeah. Uh, any Spanish curriculum or merchandise? Not yet. Great. Or any in the works? It's it's something again that we want to be able to create. At at, at one point we you know especially because we've gotten inquiries from um, other countries. Sure. Uh, and so yes, eventually we would like to be able to move where we can have our curriculum and other materials uh, in other languages, A, and also B, uh, where they're going to be available online. So yes, moving, we are working and moving very hard to, to get a lot of these things done. Great. Not currently though. Is there a certificate we can give people we nominate as nice people? Again, such a, honestly, I think some of you are reading my mind. We had with this. This is our first Choose to Be Nice week that we're doing this year. So it's our first annual, and part of it is uh, on on the Friday um, when people are celebrating in the community. We do have a certificate that is it's a participation certificate that everyone gets for participating in Choose to Be Nice week. And we saw that. And we said, geez, why don't we have a, a certificate for our Choose to be nice folks uh, mm -hmm. for our nominating folks. Mm -hmm. So we want to be able to incorporate that and also along those same lines, one of our recent uh, feature, uh, we actually, we, we typically do just one person a month, but we had a teacher that nominated like five or six of her kids that were mm -hmm. in one of her uh, clubs and we couldn't just pick one of them. So of course we picked right. all of them. And she created the most beautiful uh, certificates. And we took wow. a picture of those. She sent us a picture of those kids holding their So we said, of course. Why didn't mm -hmm. we think of that? So mm -hmm. yes, we are going to be, with our next one, we're going to start to create these certificates that we will be sending out to folks. Yes. Great. Yeah. So lots of, those were the questions I was able to capture. If anybody mm -hmm. else has questions, please go ahead and type them in chat. And I'll ask Dina. I see one person looks like they're typing, but Possibly not. And Dina Paula put her email in chat. She she'd love to see some of the sample pages. Sure. Okay. I will. Do, do I is this chat um, uh, documented somewhere, or should I make sure to go into it and find it? Well, it it will be. It will be published along with yes. the, the recording archive. Yeah. Okay. Sure, Paula, happy to send you some information. Okay then, let's let's then move on. Again, thanks so much, Dina. And I'm going to turn the mic over to Peggy who will tell us what's coming up next. Thank you so much, Dina, for sharing that amazing initiative with us. And I know we're all looking forward to watching some of those videos that you also shared that are in the live binder. We have some other great shows coming up. I hope you'll all come back next Saturday 
May 13th, where we're going to hear from an awesome trio, Paula Noggle, Billy Krakauer, and Jerry Blumengarten, who you probably know as Cyberry Man. And they're going to be sharing tons of their ideas about connecting your students with the world, projects, tools, all of that. May 20th, we have a children's author coming to join us who's going to be sharing some literacy lessons that she learned as she was an artist in residence. That is Diane de las Casas. Then May 27th, we'll take a day off for Memorial Day weekend in the United States. United States. And on June 3rd, we have Mark Moran coming back. He is the creator of the amazing sweet search engines for students. And it's being updated and revived. And he's going to tell us all about that, including more about finding Dulcinea and Choose to Matter. So we're looking forward to all of those. We also I want to let you know that there's a great free virtual conference coming up from May 20th to 22nd. All you have to do is register so that you get the links for joining each of the sessions. This conference is always terrific. And they, um, it's all focused on integrating technology into teaching and learning. So you can pick what you want to attend live on the schedule, and everything is recorded. So if you can't make it live, then you can go back and watch the recordings. So I hope you'll check that out. And then Lori, just kind of take us out through our closing slides. OK, Peggy. The Learning Revolution Project is Steve Hargadon's latest. He's gathered all his PD resources into one place, including host your own webinar, where you can sign up for a Blackboard Collaborate session as, and as long as it's a public session. It's free. You can nominate a featured teacher at this site. Uh, each month, there's a featured teacher. You can nominate yourself as well. The video collection for the archives is on iTunes U at this link. And when you exit the session, the survey link should open up, this link. Uh, you can also take the link from the chat or take the tab in the live binder for the, the link. And when you do that, at the bottom, you can request a professional development certificate that now prints out your name, and thanks to Patty Ruffing, who sends them out as well. Make sure you include a personal email address for these. Schools tend to block these from getting to you. Special thanks to our special guest, Dina Krieger. Steve Hargadon, the founder of Classroom 2.0, Future of Education and the Learning Revolution, to Blackboard Collaborate for our webinar platform, and to everyone who participated in the show today, thanks so much for coming.